Hey folks, what's up? Welcome to this video about authentication with React. So most often people choose to um, make use of some sort of authentication mechanism to either identify who is actually using the application or to, you know, as a sort of security layer to protect certain content. And I think it's very important to understand that it is impossible to prevent a non-authenticated user to view protected content that is in your React code. And I will show you um, this. So right here, um, I made a small app. Um, and just think about when you are, you know, reading like newspapers online, often they have like those premium articles, right? So then they, most of the time they, they ask you to, uh, to sign up for an account or you at least pay money to, to read the rest of the articles, you know, to get some, some kind of subscription. And um, what I did right here is I, uh, I essentially have a use state hook that says whether a user is authenticated or not. Yeah. And as you, if you look down in the code, you will see that if the user is not authenticated, it will render the uh, please log in uh, if you want to read more. And if the user is authenticated, it will show the actual content of the, um, of the article. Okay. So, what I did right here is I made a, a made a button that actually switches the the auth state, and which you will see when I click it, then you will see the content of the article. Now, this is obviously for you know like let's say big newspapers, uh, usually not the way they implement it because you know they have like thousands and thousands of articles, so it it would not make a lot of sense to store that in your React code. Uh, but something I'd like to show you is that even though we got that use state hook in place, uh, even though if we are like not authenticated, we can still check out that code. And all I have to do for that is open up my developer tools, then I navigate to sources. And then right here in the static folder, I will simply find the, uh, in the source folder, right here is the app component. And as you can see, right here, when I scroll down, I can just see the uh, articles of the content. And even uh, because there's a way to prevent this from uh, being shown in, in a production uh, version of your React app. But, you know, then still, if someone goes to the, to the main chunk, okay, and I will just uh, search for uh, Lorem, as you can see right here, I will just make the screen a little bigger. It's harder to read now because um, you, well, this code is essentially uh, minified, but as you can see, this right here are the actual paragraphs that are in our React code. So always be aware of that. And you might ask yourself, well, how can we then, you know, ensure that we are able to protect content on our site? And that's only, you know, there's only one way you can do that. And that's by fetching data from an API. Okay. And how this usually would work is that you have your react app, which is your front end, and you have an API you communicate with. And uh, with the react app, you make a request to the API. And that then sends a JSON web token or session ID um, in the uh, in the headers, for example. And uh, by the way, we're going to implement this in the uh, upcoming course that we'll be releasing, uh, which you can find more information about in the description. Uh, but having that said, that requesting be is being made and then the API is going to check and verify if that JSON web token or that session ID is actually valid. And this is completely secure because, you know, the user is able to read our code uh, of the React app However, the user is not able to read the code in, on the API or, or read directly from the database, right? It needs to have like a valid token to uh, actually get a response from the API with the protected content. So having that said, if you want to implement uh, authentication in your React app, you generally speaking have two possibilities, right? So you either have like a sort of authenticated app in an unauthenticated app component. Um, and that's especially useful if uh, your authenticated pages cannot be viewed by your unauthenticated users. So if you look right here, this is actually the implementation of that. Right here we say if the user is authenticated, 
then we show this information. And if the user is not authenticated, we show this, okay? And in your app component, you could also do something like, uh, when I go down here, uh, let's take a look. So what often would happen is that you, for example, have, you know, two, you, you have React Router, for example, uh, uh, installed. And then you would say, for example, like router, right? And then you have route. And then, well, here are all your routes that are for the authenticated users. And then down below here, you will have your routes that are for the authenticated users. And you can simply conditionally render this by doing the same thing. So you could say, if the user is authored, then show this. And if the user is not authored, then show this, All right? So this is, you know, this is how you could implement that with, uh, with React Router. So that's a very simple implementation, of course. But what also sometimes happen is that there, that there are certain pages in your application that can be viewed by both authenticated and unauthenticated users. And in those cases, it's most often um, a good idea to uh, store your auth state somewhere globally, right? That could be either React Query or in some context provider. So what I actually um, made is right here in the starter code, which you can find below, um, I've made a context provider. And as you can see right here, this is actually, uh, uh, you know, very much the same uh, as we uh, as we did in the video that was about TypeScript using the context API with TypeScript. And this is essentially a context provider that uh, has a property and it says that authored is false. And we could, for example, say set auto to true. So if we want to rewrite our application and, and make use of that context provider, we could use something like this. So I can remove this right here. And I would say const, and I will destructure something from use context, and I will use the auth context. And by the way, if you have no idea what I'm doing right here, uh, I recommend you to watch the, uh, the video that is about the context API in the TypeScript series uh, of this course. And now right here, I can destructure state and I can destructure dispatch. And now right here uh, with authored, I could say that I want to have state.authored and I want the same for this. And now instead of saying set authored, I want to dispatch an action which has a type and you can see that uh, well, I defined it as set authored, right? So that's, uh, we'll set the authored state to true. And then right here, we will have uh, set authored. Now, in order for this to work, we need to wrap the app component in the auth uh, context provider. So I will go to the index.tsx file. And right here, I will import the uh, auth provider. There we go. So I need to import that as well. And now you will see that when I save the app, give it a refresh. Now when I click on login, it will work. So that's on a very high level, how you can handle authentication internally in your React app. But like I said before, generally speaking, uh, you want to have something like, you know, uh, JSON web tokens in place or, or session IDs. Um, and, uh, but you will learn more about, you know, making actual the request to the server, getting a token and then storing it on the client side to, uh, to make future requests in my course. Um, so yeah, having that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.